So when the waitress comes by and asks how we'd like the bill, and he immediately said, oh, split. I got such a sour taste in my mouth. You're listening to Price of Stay, and we're here to combat financial literacy, ensuring young people financially thrive, not just survive. I'm super pumped for today's episode, which dives into who pays for the first date. If you're not single, this episode is still a great one to listen to, to inform yourself on the conversations around money. We get into when to have a conversation about who's paying and practical tips on how to have the conversation. And my personal favorite out of this topic of this whole episode, we also get into where this question of who pays first even comes from because it's such a big one nowadays. All right, Prices Pack, enjoy the show. Summer is upon us and it's about to be the best one yet. Why? Because this summer, you're feeling yourself and are ready to be a freak in the sheets. A freak in the sheets, Tay? Are you serious? I know you're absolutely dying to be a freak in the sheets this summer. And that's why I present to you Priceless Tay's budget template. Get down and dirty in the sheets. Go from broke to bougie. And take control of your money instead of it controlling you this summer. Go to pricelesstay.com slash budget template to learn more. Check it out. Awkward silence falls over the table as the waiter brings the check. You and your date make brief eye contact, both hesitating to reach for it. Who's going to pay this time? If you've ever found yourself in this cringe-ass situation, you know the age-old who pays dilemma can put a huge dent on an otherwise super fun night. You know, back in the day going on first dates in Raleigh, I had a pretty strict personal philosophy similar to you smelt it, you dealt it, meaning that if you asked me out on a first date, you offer to pay. If I ask you on a first date, I offer to pay. And some of y'all are thinking like, yo, that's crazy. But my personal philosophy was that, and if you can't afford the first date for yourself, find somewhere else to go that's within your budget. And if that means going to get a coffee and a walk in the park, that's that. And fortunately enough, by living with this philosophy, I really had super awkward encounters with payment, but I know some people who do. I just know them by their social media and have seen videos. So the first one that I want to pull up is Kai at Kai Wins on TikTok. I'm upset because you asked me on a date and you're asking me to split the bill with you. It's a respect thing. I just don't know you that well. Okay, I don't know you that well, so that's completely fair, but I still agreed to go on a date with you to IHOP and you're asking me to split the bill and I just, I don't think that's like respectful. I would pay for you at a nice restaurant as well. Just... It's principle. Okay, well, it's a respect thing for me, and on top of being disrespectful, I feel like you just sat here and played a thoughts game up literally the entire time after asking me to go on a date for the last three weeks. It's, so It's called Jackpot World, and I am practicing for a tournament. You know, I'm not even sure what Jackpot World even means, but at the end of this clip, she even goes to say that she'll just cover the whole thing if he can just leave and doesn't talk to her. There's some heated comments too that I want to read out with over 12,000 people liking a comment from at Sandy Cheeks 101, which props to you for securing that handle because that's a classic. Anyway, they say, quote, quote, if he invites you, he should 100% pay, quote, quote. Another comment from Surge has over 15,000 likes And that says, quote, quote, whoever invites is the person that pays, period, quote, quote. And I have to read you this one because with 7,000 likes too, because I just honestly find it funny from Carrie, which says, quote, quote, I hop was your first red flag, quote, quote. I'm not going to lie. I haven't been to an I hop in years, but I do love the Waffle House and I would not be livid if a first date was at the Waffle House. 
I personally like their the extra extra crispy hash browns. Those were specialty back then growing up because I grew up in upstate New York and we had home fries. We did not have hash browns. If you know, you know, hash browns were the thing. When you go down south, that is what you get. You get hash browns. You don't get home fries. So I got them extra crispy. So good. I would not be livid if a first date was at a Waffle House. All right. On to another one with George Janko and King Batch. If you ask a girl out on a date and she blesses you with her presence and her time of getting ready and setting a time side to like be with you, the least thing you could do is pick up the bill. I know some girls are like, I make my money, I can oh, pay for it. Oh, if a girl asks me out, then she paying the full thing. I don't split, but it's either I pay or she pays. Have you ever had a girl pay for your yeah. date? Yeah. No. If she invites me out, she paying. If I invite her out, I'm paying. You ain't gonna get no free meal up out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they're doing. Let's get dinner tomorrow. Let's go to Catch Steak, the mm -hmm. most expensive restaurant in LA. Yeah, let's go there. She thinks she's on a mission, but I got my mission. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get me a free meal at Catch Steak. <laughs> I mean, it's not Mission Impossible out there, but really, he's got a similar philosophy to how I ran it back in the day. But the difference was that it would be a conversation prior to the debate about who's paying rather than going to catch, for example, and then having a dilemma there about it. Here's another, but this has something different about it. And I'll point it out after we take a listen from Coco on TikTok at Coco Beat. Guys, I don't know about your culture, but in Chinese culture, guys always pay for the first date. It's not even a question or discussion. There is no like, oh, should he pay or should I pay? Like, no, it's just what it is. But let me know what dating looks like in your culture. Did anyone pick it up? Did you pick up on it? Coco highlights how cultural backgrounds influences who pays for dates. This is a crucial aspect that often shapes people's expectations and norms. So before we pivot to the core of today's episode on who actually pays, we need to have a conversation about how traditional gender roles and cultural expectations influences who pays for dates and how modern perspectives are shifting these norms. <music> Traditional gender roles and cultural expectations have long influenced who pays for dates, with many believing that men should pay, rightfully so. No, just kidding. If you're new here, you'll quickly find out that a priceless principle we have is always staying curious. So I did some research to find out where this expectation came from and how it has evolved over time. Again, you came for finance, but you're kind of getting a little bit of a history lesson. Historically, the notion that men should pay for dates is deeply rooted in social customs dating back to the early 20th century and beyond. During these times, men were typically the primary breadwinners, while women were often financially dependent on men. This economic dynamic reinforced the expectation that men should cover the costs of dates as a demonstration of their ability to provide and protect. I mean, you want to eat at the end of the day, so it makes sense to me back in the day. Back then, though, it wasn't just about who had the money. It was about who had access to it. Believe it or not, women in the U.S. and the United States couldn't open up their own bank accounts on their own until the 1960s and 1970s. Before that, they needed a male relative or husband to co-sign. This legal and financial dependency on men further cemented the idea that men should be the ones to pay for dates and generally speaking, be responsible for finances. Now, the situation began to change in 1974 with this little thing that made a huge impact called the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, which made it illegal for creditors to discriminate against applicants based on gender, among other factors. This act allowed women to open their own bank accounts without any sort of men or relatives to do so and obtain credit independently, which was a significant step towards financial equality which was a significant step towards financial equality. 
Apart from women unable to even pay, considering that having separate accounts wasn't even a thing, the practice of men paying for women on dates was also tied to chivalry and courtship rituals. It was seen as a gentlemanly act to take care of the financial aspect of the evening, showcasing generosity and respect. This was part of a broader cultural narrative where men were expected to be the providers and women the nurturers. Different cultures also bring unique perspectives to this conversation. In many traditional Eastern cultures, such as Japan or India, there is still a strong expectation that men should pay for dates. This is tied to deep-rooted cultural norms around masculinity, provisions, and respect. To get some takes here, let's pull up Kiki on TikTok. Who pays on dates? Something very controversial. Where I come from, and that is you are Croatia, men pay for the first, second, third, or whatever, like all the dates. And that's, I'm not going to change my mind about this. That's how I was brought up. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, I could never be with a guy who makes me pay for my meal on the first date. So I'm just, you know, what do you guys think about that? Now, this is highly in contrast with Scandinavian countries like Sweden and Norway, which emphasize gender equality and social welfare, often approach dating and financial responsibilities with a more egalitarian perspective. It's not uncommon for couples to split the bill right from the first date reflecting this broader societal values of equality and independence. And in some Middle Eastern cultures, paying for dates can be a matter of family honor and respect, with men expected to show their capability and willingness to provide. Listen to this TikTok. It's hilarious by Koi at Ozzy Koi. When Arabs pay oh, for the bill. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, it's on me today. It's bro, on me. Bro, don't do this shit. Guys, guys. Listen, listen. Hear me out. Hear me out. Oh my bro, it's on me. Bro, honestly. Bro, let me pay. Let me pay. Okay, take it next time. Today is on me. Guys, Today guys. is on me. Can I get, let me see this first. It's a dinosaur. Look. Oh, oh. Bro, actually, look. Today is on me. It's on me. I'll, on pay. Me, I'll pay today. You know what? It's on you. It's on him. It's on him. Okay, it's okay. on him. Okay. Hey. No, no, no. Pay it. Pay it. I don't want it. No, take, I don't want it. You can pay. I don't want it. No, you can pay. Just, just keep it. Just keep it. You can pay. I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay. Meanwhile, in Latin American cultures, machismo may indicate that men should take the lead in financial matters, including paying for dates as a sign of their strength and reliability. Understanding these cultural contexts is essential when it comes to discussing who pays for dates as they influence personal beliefs and behaviors. It's important to recognize that while norms are shifting globally, cultural traditions still do today play a significant role in shaping expectations. However, many individuals, especially the youngers, the Gen Zers, are moving towards a more equal and flexible approach considering factors like the gender wage gap, personal financial situations, and a desire for equality in relationships. The idea that whoever initiates the date should pay or that the bill should be split has gained popularity as a more modern and egalitarian perspective. And this really came about with a few factors, such as more women entering the workforce, being allowed to enter the workforce, and achieving financial independence. Women are no longer financially dependent on men by choice, allowing for a more balanced approach to dating expenses, which again, back in the day, really wasn't even possible. Like I said, it wasn't really by choice. Now it is by choice. And now having more women in the workforce, many modern relationships are being built on principles of equality and mutual respect, which this cultural shift promotes for shared responsibilities, including financial ones like splitting the bill or deciding that women don't have to do the dishes all the time and that maybe if the woman cooks, men should do the dishes. So finally, we have the groundwork laid out for us. Let's get into the communication around paying for the date and how to go about it in such a way that we don't have a little situation at IHOP. But first, a word from our friends. Have you ever not really understood the way in which you think about money. I mean, we all had different upbringings. You might have a brother who thinks that 
saving is super easy. You might have a sister, aka me, who thought that saving was actually quite difficult growing up. And she is more of a natural spender. And I'm very open about that, guys. That's step one of the process. Want to discover all the tips and tricks about how to go from a scarcity mindset to a growth mindset? DM us on Instagram at Priceless Tay, the word money quiz. That's money quiz. And I'll send you our free money quiz that you can take to understand your money mindset. Take it, super helpful. You'll be better off in understanding who you are, why you think about these things with money, and most importantly, the next steps to help you financially thrive, not just survive. All right, that was some delicious finger food, but now it's time for the main plate. The communication around paying for a date. I I don't even deserve to go on one. No, I'm just kidding. We all do. We all deserve to go on a date. And Priceless Pack, I want you to know that this is not a past plate type of situation. No, 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 no. This is a buffet style gathering where we're going to talk about things. You're going to pick and choose what you are most comfortable with and feel most like you. Not everyone is going to be a fan of some dishes. Some might be vegetarian. Some might be meat lovers. And that is okay. Okay. So first up, when to have this conversation. The time to discuss who pays, and this is for generally, I think everybody, is prior to the date. This can prevent any sort of awkwardness or misunderstandings or IHOP situations when that bill arrives. Talking about who will pay before the date helps set clear expectations for both parties. Imagine you're enjoying this super fantastic date. The conversation is going great. It's flowing. You both are so into each other. Like chemistry and vibes are there and then the bill arrives and suddenly there's an awkward pause as both of you try to figure out who should pay. And sometimes wait staff play into this by placing the bill on the man's or more masculine person's side of the table automatically and not just like in the middle, you know what I mean? And like I just mentioned, without prior discussion, assumptions might be made that lead to misunderstandings and you might not even had made those assumptions. Someone a part of the wait staff might have. So... Now let's talk about how to bring up the conversation. It's all about being casual yet clear. Like we don't want to be like, so you paying? We don't want that. Based on how you feel uh, towards the dating scene, here's a few approaches that I would suggest you could approach the conversation with. If you want to pay the bill, you can use this line. So I was thinking, how about I get this one? And if you want to project a little further out in the future, you can say something like, I was thinking, how about I get this one and you can get the next. Now, if you want to split the bill, you can use this line. Would you be okay if we split the bill on our date? It's literally simple as that. And if you are trying to ask without assuming about who pays, aka you're trying to figure out if you're getting a free meal or not, but really actually wants the other party to pay. And like I just said, without directly saying so, something like, hey, I'm really looking forward to our date. How do you usually prefer to handle the bill? Works most of the time in trying to figure out how these things work. And I want to mention about the placement of it, not just like going in there, you're talking about like, oh, I'm from this, my family's from that. This is a perfect setup question after it has been decided the restaurant or the place, wherever that you're going that costs money to go ahead and pay. If you don't have that conversation, then it will be very interesting and a little bit more challenging to try and bring up that financial conversation. So nipping it right in the bud, boom. Yeah, we're going to get drinks at this place. All right. You comfortable with splitting the bill or all right, I'm going to get this one. Can you get the next one? Like that makes sense right there. I am no champion at datings and dates. And quite honestly, I would get really nervous. I am like such a confident person, but that realm, I was a little bit, you know, a little bit shy in the first ones, but that is how I would do it. 
you know, even until this day. I feel like these approaches show that you're considerate and proactive about sure ensuring both of you are comfortable. So let's go through a few different scenarios to see how you might handle them. So fun. If you're the one extending the invitation, it's often courteous to offer to pay. You could say something like, I love to take you out for dinner, babe. <laughs> how, <laughs> or not, you don't have to say babe. I'd love to take you out for dinner. How about I cover this one? Also, the unspoken benefit here is getting the points when you have a great credit card that provides. So if you want our priceless picks, go to pricelesstay.com slash credit dash cards for those. Anyway, if you're the one being invited, it's most likely polite to offer to contribute. For example, I'd love to join you. How about we split the bill? Or how about I get the tip on this one? If you don't want to split, but like want to contribute or something like that. Or yes, excited to get treated on a night out. I'd love to join you, which says to the other party that they will be treating you out, meaning you ain't fronting cash. They are fronting your experience and you are getting treated. And I have to tell you, that last line would have really helped me back in the day. So little story time here. I went on this date with a guy I absolutely adored. Hello, if you're watching this. We had been friends prior to and hung out all the damn time in a group setting. Like, I mean, all the time, played ping pong, best of friends. But when it came to going on a date with him, I had never explained at the time. And I know we were young. Or I didn't set the scene of me wanting to get courted and treated to a dinner out. So when the waitress comes by and asks how we'd like the bill, and he immediately said, oh, split. I got such a sour taste in my mouth. We didn't go on another date until years later. And during that time, I clearly had my expectations communicated and laid out. During the initial conversation, it's important to listen without judgment to your date's perspective on paying. Try to understand where they're coming from, whether it's personal values, cultural norms, or financial constraints. And this mutual understanding will make it easier to find a solution you're both comfortable with. I have to say, some people might feel uncomfy kind of discussing finances early on. Reassure them by saying, I just want to make sure we're both comfortable and on the same page. It's no big deal. Just something I like to clarify. Now, guys, I must say, I know there are some of you who want to avoid this conversation for the first day altogether. Please don't. Please don't. Like this, if you're trying to date to marry, these are conversations that you're going to need to have anyway. So you might as well not waste your time and just get to it. Get to it, people. Anyway, if that is you and you don't want to have this conversation and you just want to you know, do the thing for the night. That's cool too. I urge you to start these conversations now because if it all goes well, more of those money talks will be in your future. But again, if you don't want to have it, I keep on coming back if you want to have it. If you don't want to have it, I have the best solution for you. Ready for it? Don't go on a date that costs money. I know it sounds a lot harder than it actually is. So let me break it down for you. Go somewhere that you don't have to pull out your wallet and just chit chat out and about. In Raleigh, I've gone on dates where I've literally picked up a tea beforehand because I don't drink a lot of coffee. I'm more of a tea galley, a matcha latte boba and met at the park with his dog, having a chill ass time, getting to know each other, super friendly. Also having the dog there too was kind of a nice buffer, quite honestly, but you could go for a walk in a scenic area with some nice views or atmosphere, visit a free museum or gallery, or attend a local community event. These options allow you to enjoy each other's company without the pressure of financial obligations. Explore a farmer's market. I have a story around this one too. I'll get to it in a second. Walk around, enjoy those sights and smells, maybe get some free samples. Those goodies are really good. I'm not going to lie. This is where the story gets in. I've gone on a few of my cousin's dates and my brother's. I'm not going <laughs> to who they asked me, by the way, to be there, not just me being there, if you know what I mean, kind of just listening to like what's going on. It's extremely entertaining. If you haven't done it, it's probably not the healthiest, but it was so fun back in the days because then we just chat about how it went and what our thoughts were. 
you have to let me know if we were crazy for doing this, please email us because I really got to know now. Feedback at pricelesstay.com. Anyway, I've gone on a date where I brought out old art supplies, like art supplies that I haven't used in years. And I'm like, yeah, let's go on a date in Dorothea Dix Park that was in Raleigh at the time. I'll bring some paint supplies. You bring whatever you got. Let's just paint in the park. And that that one was no family members around if you're listening to that too, by the way. And I have to say, that might have been one of the most chillest dates ever. It was so freaking nice. Like listening to music, painting, chatting. Highly recommend it for you singles. And it's free. It's literally using up dusty, crusty supplies from your basement or your attic that you haven't used in a while like be kids again get young you know what I mean choosing free or low cost date ideas can take the stress out of the situation and allows you to focus on building that connection because that's what matters it's not it shouldn't be about the place it should be about the people that's it and I've learned that out of moving so many different times over so many different years Plus, anyway, it shows creativity and thoughtfulness, which can be impressive qualities on a first date. Now it's time for advice. I'm going to read some inquiries and give a take on it. And if you leave us a voice memo, contact at pricelesstay.com or go to pricelesstay.com slash ask dash pricelesstay. You too can also get some priceless, priceless advice. Be right back after our word from our friends. You just got an email in your inbox. OF. OF. Your girl or guy see that and gets upset with you and they go into your phone and they see OF. Only finance. Want to stay in the loop with us? Subscribe to our weekly newsletter by DMing us only finance. That's O N L Y finance on Instagram at Priceless Tay. Let's revolutionize your financial habits one Tuesday at a time. As a reminder, you're listening to Priceless Tay, and we're here to combat financial illiteracy, ensuring young people financially thrive, not just survive. We have a question, quote, quote, what does going Dutch mean? Is it the same as splitting the bill evenly? So the answer to this is no. It means each person pays for their own. That is separate bills. It does not mean a 50-50 split unless you both order the same exact thing coincidentally. Next one, quote, as a girl, should I offer to pay on the first date? I'm going on my first date ever and I want to know if it's okay to pay on the first date or should the guy do it? How does a guy feel if the girl paid on the first date? I'm inexperienced. That's why I have a lot of questions. I'm so glad you're asking your questions. Doesn't matter about the experience. You're asking the questions. You're getting to learn. That's the point. Good for you. This is the time before the date where you can fall back to one of those three texts, you know, figuring it out, um, how you want to pay the bill. You can use this line. I was thinking, how about I get this one? If you want to project a little further out into the future again, you can say, I was thinking how about I get this one and you can get the next. And if you want to split the bill, would you be okay if we split the bill on our date? And if you are trying to ask without assuming about who pays something like, Hey, I'm really looking forward to our date. How do you usually prefer to handle the bill works most of the time? Ask beforehand. And in my opinion, It's just one more thing you don't have to worry about so you can focus more on the date than just the question that's looming if you go out to dinner or something like that. This next one's a bit long, so stay with me here as we go through this together. I, male 27, had met this girl, female 23, on Bumble a few weeks ago, got around to talking off app for a while. We really seemed to hit it off, but she confided in me that she suffers from anxiety and had some bad experiences with some exes who truly sounded awful, important for later. We get around to scheduling a dinner date at a restaurant I really love. And she asked me if her friend could come as well to make her feel safe. 
I was a little surprised at first and thought it might make the date a bit awkward, honestly, but I told her that that'd be fine if it helps her feel comfortable. I'd heard about this kind of thing before anyways, so I'd figure it's something new women are doing to suss out bad dudes, so I understand where she's coming from. The problem arises once we actually get to the date Her friend is just as dressed up as she is, and they both seem excited. So I asked the friend directly what her plans were for this, if she planned to just hang out, if she was ordering for herself or what. The friend starts getting a bit aggressive with me almost right off the bat, telling me that she's basically a part of the date too and expected me to pay for everyone. I had already offered to pay for me and the girl I was taking on the date, but her friend's bill wasn't ever mentioned. Now in my head, I figured this would have been something where the friend was like there just in case, but I didn't figure this would mean like they'd actually be participating in the date. I straight up tell them that this isn't cool and that I wouldn't have agreed to this and told the friend I'd even be cool if you were standing outside with a damn sword. But unless this is some sort of threesome thing or a polygamous date, then this is just weird. Obviously, they left and the date didn't end up happening. Part of me feels like I was correct in pointing out the weirdness and awkwardness this whole situation put me in and rejecting the date altogether. But I can't help but feel like I went a bit too far getting at them like that in a public place, like I should have just left without a fuss or gone along with it and just break it off more nicely afterwards. Am I the asshole? I personally don't think you are the asshole here. You did all the right things when it came to openly discussing paying the bill prior to the date, expecting, you know, her friend showing up as security at the date. I mean, even asking prior to eating if you were going to have to pay for the friend was a good move because at the end of the day, somebody would have had to pay that bill and it's nice knowing that that was handled prior to even ordering and figuring out that situation. So props to you. So no, you're not the asshole here. And I think that a lot can be learned from this experience about how important it is to have these upfront conversations and about what does it mean to bring another person on a first date? Like... These are conversations that are all very, very important. At the end of the day, the key to navigating the who pays dilemma on dates is open communication, mutual respect for each other's financial situations, and a willingness to find fair solutions that work for everyone involved. Throughout this episode, we explored the importance of having upfront conversations to get on the same page about money matters and avoid awkward moments when the bill arrives. We discussed practical payment approaches like taking turns covering the costs or splitting the bill evenly. Additionally, we touched on how evolving cultural norms, especially among younger generations like Gen Z, are moving away from traditional gender roles when it comes to paying for dates. And I have to mention this as well too, It's not just men, female dates. It is anybody dating anybody nowadays, which also brings up this conversation on who pays. More people are embracing an equal and flexible mindset, factoring in the gender wage gap and personal financial circumstances. So no matter your situation, being upfront about the budgets and boundaries from the start sets the stage for transparency and honesty and trust in the beginning. This is the fun stuff, the good stuff before the bad stuff eventually kicks in. You know what I'm saying? I've learned over time in my life that if they're good people, it's not it's not about the place. It's about the people and that will provide you happiness, joy, longevity, love. So don't be afraid to have those initial who pays conversations. A little openness and willingness to compromise can go a long way towards strengthening your connections while avoiding financial stress. At the end of the day, the memories you make are far more valuable than who picked up the check. Thanks for listening to Priceless Tay. Be sure to like, subscribe, and give us a review wherever you listen to this podcast. And share this with a girly, broski, or a homie. You can find us on TikTok, 
Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn at Priceless Tay. If you'd like to ask us about your personal finances, whether that's diving deep into the sheets or advice on a money story, leave us a voice memo, contact at pricelesstay.com or go to pricelesstay.com slash ask dash priceless tay. Please rate Priceless Tay wherever you listen to the show. Listen, when you rate the show, it helps reach more people, which there's a lot of people who want to thrive and not just survive. So help the community around you by reading the show. Our new articles, The Ultimate Guide to Negotiating a Raise as Your Salaried Employee and How Your Behaviors About Money Affect Your Personal Finances are all up on pricelesstay.com. Let's get scratching.